In today's 10 minute memory hack, I'm gonna share with you one ingredient that is destroying your memory. The simple fact is that one out of every three Americans are destroying their memories by eating one specific ingredient in their food and 90% of people are completely unaware of it. Hi, my name is Julia Lundstrom and I'm a neuroscience and brain health researcher and the CEO of Simple Smart Science, a brain health company. If you're here today because you're over 55 and afraid your memory isn't as good as it used to be, then you're gonna wanna stick with me because I've got some very valuable information for you that you need to hear. So what is this one ingredient that's so dangerous to our brain health? It's sugar, but not just any sugar. One kind of added sugar that has only been around since 1975, and we're only now seeing the long-term effects of this chronic toxin called high fructose corn syrup. I'm going to refer to it as HFCS as we go forward. It's in almost every processed food you eat, from breads to drinks, even some meats and ketchup. About 80% of the foods on a grocery store shelf have either added sugars or HFCS and sometimes both. Research is showing that sugar has become the principal poison in our diets. Many nutritionists and public health officials have blamed it for a wide range of health problems, including the obesity epidemic and chronic conditions like diabetes and heart disease. As someone who is very passionate about brain health, the thing that scares me the most about this is what HFCS is doing to your memory. The process is chronic. It happens very slowly over time, causing forgetfulness, fear, and frustration. Many people don't even realize that their poor memory is caused by what this sugar is doing to their brains. We know that sugar makes us fat, that's pretty obvious, but what isn't obvious is that eating too much added sugar, and especially HFCS, also increases your risk of Alzheimer's disease by 70%. The mounting evidence has even led some scientists to refer to Alzheimer's disease as type three diabetes because of the strong link between blood sugar levels and cognitive decline. And a full half of people over 85 already have Alzheimer's disease. So why are we so addicted to sugar? In order to answer this, we need to go back in time to 1975. See, sugar was very expensive and the large food companies were looking for a way to sweeten their food cheaply. And then they found their solution, a cheap sweetener from Japan called high fructose corn syrup. This corn syrup has 20% sweeter flavor than sugar. 73% more with a lab-created corn syrup, and it's cheap to produce and cheap to store. It was the perfect solution. Replace the costly sugar with the cheap high fructose corn syrup. With a higher level of sweetness, you would assume that the food companies would use less high fructose corn syrup to replace the sugar, right? Wrong, they actually used more, lots more. Before 1975, high fructose corn syrup didn't even exist in our diets. Today, the average American eats 63 pounds of it a year, and it's in almost everything you eat, bread, cereal, meats, ketchup, yogurts, the list goes on and on. In fact, if you took away all the foods on a grocery store shelf with high fructose corn syrup, you would have only 20% of the foods left. Not only did food companies replace fat with high fructose corn syrup, they replaced the fiber with it too. Because see, foods loaded with lots of fiber don't store very long on the grocery store shelf. But if you remove all the fiber, they can last a long time, but of course they end up kind of tasting like cardboard. So the food companies brought in even more fructose so that you would eat that frozen hamburger patty that's been shipped around the world. We used to eat about 100 to 300 grams of fiber a day. Now it's 12. Fiber simply gives food a shorter shelf life, so out it goes. The average American adult male eats 187 more calories a day than he did 25 years ago. The average female eats 335 calories more a day. The bulk of these calories come from high fructose corn syrup. In 1970, the average American ate 70 pounds of sugar a year. Now, with the addition of HFCS, that number has doubled to 141 pounds a year. 
We are eating way more sugar in the form of fructose and it's a huge problem because of how the body metabolizes it. Fructose does not suppress your hunger hormone leptin. So no matter how much you eat, you never feel full. Now you may feel sick if you eat too much, but not full. Fructose can only be processed by the liver and a substance that can only be processed by the liver is actually the definition of a poison. Addictions to this poison cause a slow, chronic decline in your memory. As more fructose is consumed, the body produces more insulin to regulate that sugar. So as you overindulge, your brain becomes overwhelmed by high levels of insulin. And eventually, insulin and leptin levels profoundly disrupt your brain signaling, leading to troubles in your thinking and especially your memory. Eventually, it can cause permanent brain damage. Unfortunately, the FDA won't regulate H. FCS because they claim to only regulate acute toxins and they consider fructose a chronic toxin. The USDA won't touch it either. They'd have to actually admit there was a problem with your food. Even if you don't have type 2 diabetes or pre-diabetes, higher blood sugar levels have a negative influence on cognition. In one study, when researchers disrupted the proper signaling of insulin in the brain, they were able to create many of the symptoms of, of Alzheimer's disease. You know, disorientation, confusion, inability to learn and remember. About 85% of Americans are insulin and leptin resistant, mostly due to eating too much fructose. Researchers have even shown that higher fructose levels are associated with a higher perceived age. In other words, the higher your fructose levels, the older people think you look and the older you act. In a study coming out of UCLA, researchers found that rats fed a fructose-rich diet developed both insulin resistance and impaired brain function in only six weeks. The professor of neurology at the David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA says that eating a high fructose diet over the long term alters your brain's ability to learn and remember information. In fact, it's shocking to me, and now hopefully you as well, the amount of clinical research that has piled up over the past 10 years linking fructose to over 70 different diseases. Sounds pretty ominous, doesn't it? Well, I didn't just bring you here to scare you. I wanted to provide you with some tools that can help you fight back against the damage that high fructose corn syrup has done to your memory and fight back naturally. So how do we go about this? Well, let's start with the most obvious tool, but not the easiest tool to implement. Added sugars are in prepackaged foods, right? So what do we need to do? Right, you need to learn to be a ninja shopper. Look at those labels. Try to pick products that have no HFCS but certainly not in the first three ingredients. That means it's loaded with it when it's in the first three ingredients. This may not be as easy as it sounds. You'll be amazed when you start reading the labels and realize how much of this stuff is in everything. I promise you it's worth the hassle. Not only will your brain feel better, but so will your body. The next thing is to start cooking from scratch. If you're cooking the ingredients yourself, you know exactly what's in it and can control any added sugars and other unhealthy ingredients that are processed that you know our processed foods are full of eat brain healthy foods what i mean by that is foods that have been shown to improve memory and bolster the brain like high omega-3 fatty fish and whole grains and fruits and berries with a high antioxidant count fresh veggies and nuts and probiotic rich foods like kefir and kimchi and whole yogurt tool number four eat fat. Don't avoid all fat, just the bad fats. Our brains are very fatty and they need fat in order to function well. It's important to understand what types of fats are good for our brain and which types of fats are bad for our brains. So cook using good fats like extra virgin olive oil or coconut oil or sesame or flax or walnut oil and avocado oils. Monosaturated fats boost brain function and promote healthy blood flow and a healthy flow of blood to the brain, which means a highly functioning brain. You may have wondered about coconut oil because it's 90% saturated fat, but it's different than red meat and dairy saturated fats. 
Coconut oil's medium length chains are easily absorbed and go straight to the liver. Once there, they get turned into energy as molecules called ketones, and ketones are excellent brain fuel. The fats that you need to stay away from are found in foods with high trans fatty acids or saturated fats, like your pizzas. These unhealthy fats can do a number on your brain over time. You can probably guess where most of these come from, you know, your fast foods, your donuts. Um, did you know that in our fast-paced modern world, people are consuming nearly 15 times more bad fat than good? Cheap, quick food is easier than planning, shopping, and cooking every day, but there's a price to pay, and your brain is the one that has to suffer for it. So on to our final tool. Get regular exercise and meditate. Okay, guys. I think everyone has heard this by now, but maybe you're holding out for some type of magic bullet. It doesn't exist. You just have to put in the work. There's so many studies on exercise and meditation that the positive research is crystal clear. Both help tremendously to reduce stress and grow new brain matter. They boost endorphins and help manufacture the brain positive protein known as BDNF. The real term is brain-derived neurotropic factor, but that's a mouthful, so we'll stick to BDNF for this video. What BDNF does is promote the survival of neurons by playing a role in growth and maintenance of these cells. In your brain, BDNF is active at the connections between nerve cells where cellular communication happens. It's absolutely crucial and exercise and meditation produce more of it, so it's literally a no-brainer. These are all strategies that you can easily implement starting today, so I encourage you to go for it. Go into your kitchens, throw out the processed food, and start buying healthy. That's all the time I have for you today. I hope you enjoy your 10-minute memory hacks. Subscribe if you do, and comment on things you wanna hear about in the future. My passion is to be able to help one million people make a measurable improvement in their brain health, so I hope these videos help you. Keep on braining. Thank you.